it's Mike, still messing with music. Hey, it was about three months ago that I installed this high vibe unit on this beautiful Cremona classical nylon guitar. Uh, a month before that, I installed on the Ibanez um, steel string guitar, 40 year old beauty that, I, that I've uh, had for a while. And uh, they've had different results. Uh, one of the common things between the two is that these side straps we're not staying on with the gel super glue. So we're gonna go back into both guitars. I'm just gonna show you on the Cremona uh, and we're gonna replace this. And this time I'm not messing around. I'm going with Gorilla Construction Adhesive. I'm gonna use just a little bit of it on, the, on this and uh, I'm gonna stick it to the side up here and side. And uh, then we're gonna get the, uh, we're gonna get it working correctly. If you listen hear the, the cables rattling around in there. Well, you can imagine when you're playing the guitar and you've got a lot of vibration coming from the actuators, um, those, those cables are a nuisance, right? They, they definitely cause a problem. So we're going we're gonna to fix that. <laughs> oh, this, this is live TV you get from Mike Messes With Music. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to give that a try and um, let, let's take a look at, um, first, we're going to listen to the different effects. On the iPhone app, we see a grid of nine effects that were selected from this library of 22 choices. We're going to try six of these effects to get an idea of how the guitar is performing. On the guitar's control head, we select System, which displays the versions and Bluetooth name. Then we reach a screen where the gain is set to 87 over 100, the same as on the Ibanez. Lastly, the iPhone app has these equalizer settings. First, we're going to listen to the different effects, hear how they sound, because there are a couple of effects which just don't work. And it might be because of where the actuators are situated. Oddly enough, I thought I situated the actuators in the wrong place on the Ibanez, and I don't have the same problem I have with the, with the Cremona and uh, the feedback problems on the Echo event. My Echo loves it when I say that. <laughs> so I'll be back with you in a moment, and we're going to give this a, a closer look. Okay. Well, we're going to record into the uh, Ableton uh, app, the Live 11. And uh, we'll try and get this to, to pick up to the sound as best we can. And, uh, well, let's just pick around on it a bit. If, um, if I start off on off, okay, so none of the effects uh, are in play here. You can hear. It sounds like it should. There's no, there, ex except for perhaps a little rattling from those, uh, those extra cables. Uh, I can play it hard. No problem, right? I can play. And it's okay. That's all and off. Now let's try some effects. We're going to move to reverb. Reverb's a great sound. Uh, and, it, and it sounds pretty good on this guitar, so we're good. We're, um... Okay. Nice sound. Gives you that hollow echo, really really beautiful sound sounds great on this guitar sounds great on the Ibanez as well let's try it chorus good solid nice extra sound to it that that chorus is an interesting effect
OK on the high end. So chorus is usable. Now, remember our friend ECHO over there. <laughs> so ECHO is an effect which has a problem with this guitar. I'm able to play ECHO on the other guitar, on the Ibanez, but let's just listen to what we get out of this. It's not going to last long. <laughs> Okay, so hard playing, forget it. So you have control over echo. If you move up or down, you get a different sound. You can hear the long echo or the shorter echo. If I put it right in the middle, that's plenty for muddying it up. Just isn't worth playing. Echo isn't worth playing the way this is set up. Has it got to do with where the actuators are? We'll take a look at where the actuators are positioned on this guitar and see if that could be what's causing this problem. If we go on to tremolo, sound, adds an extra element, an extra effect to the guitar, very good. Octaver. Pretty heavy duty. Not pleasant. Sounds better on the Ibanez. So, Something about octaver is overpowering the guitar. It's over oversaturating where the actuators are. It's 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 doubling up. Perhaps the frequencies are wrong. I don't. I can't say why. Fantasy. I'll skip over vintage. Now vintage. I love vintage. Vintage is a, one of my favorites to play on the Ibanez. It sounds like the Beach Boys playing, right? It, it's a '60s sound. <laughs> guitar as it is on the Ibanez. On the Ibanez I can play vintage all day long and it really has a great sound to it. Here we end up overpowering the Cremona. Is it because it's a classical nylon string guitar? Is it because I put the actuators in the wrong place? Unknown. But I'm just explaining to you what I'm finding uh, between these two different installs that I did. Now there are many more effects but these are the effects that I've tried to use the most and so they're the ones that I've showed you. I hope this has been helpful now let's take a look at the inside of the guitar. Okay, we're ready to start getting inside this guitar and see what's going on in there. Um, we're going to first take off the strings. We're going to fast forward this for you. Inside here. Oh, it's turned on. Huh. Turn it off. Okay. All right. Well, let's let's get a look inside. All right. Here we go. Inside. If we look at where those actuators are, you can see where the piezo uh, wire comes down, and just to the to the right of that. Uh, actually to the left on the guitar is where the uh, actuator is situated and that's right here so it, it's matched up on the other side so we're right on the bridge on either side of the bridge just exactly where we're supposed to put the actuators um, so they're they're positioned properly you can see that there actually are two um, oh, there are looks like there's two blue um, One's of these, so this one must be out of that guitar. Um, but they're they're right next to each other, and they're not doing a good job of holding the uh, the, the uh, wires from 
wrapping from, from uh, rolling around inside. So I'm going to fix that. Reaching in, just, just checking out the uh, actuators. You know, when I touch them, I, I can feel that they move a little bit, but that's okay. That's actually the, the ability of them to, they're, they're fixed, they're fixed well. Now I'm feeling down here where these straps are. So the strap held, so I'll leave one of these straps where it is and make sure that it's got a good grab a hold of the, uh, the cables. And then the other strap, I'm going to try to pull it so I can move it further away. It does not want to pull. So I take back what I said <laughs> about the gel, the super gel, it held. It's just I put it in the wrong place and I left too many cables dangling. So here I go trying to uh, fix that. And uh, this isn't very exciting from your perspective. <laughs> you can't see what I'm doing because it's pretty crowded in there. But I'm trying to get the cables to link up the, the one forward, the one that's further forward, has a good bite on the cables. But I can't get the second one to do anything. Where it's situated further down, it's further away, and you have to pull the cables quite tight to try and get to, the, to it. And that is not, not working. I wonder, Getting those cables to, to route, starting here, starting here, heading to here, and you've got a strap here, but then if the next strap is up here, it's too far, and it, it's very hard to get the strap to grab hold of the, the cables because they're pinched here, and then they got to get over to over to here. So. Um, what I would say is, if I could find one of these with a longer uh, prong, that I'd be a lot better off. Uh, one with about twice as long a prong, so you could reach out and grab hold of the cables and then bend over them. But uh, the way it is, um, that's, that's the best I could do. Now we got less rattling around than we did, which is the best I could hope for in this case, I suppose. So I'm gonna put this back together again and um, start this up and, uh, take a couple of strums on it, see how it's doing, and then we'll take a look at the Ibanez. Okay, here we are with plan B. Um, I was not able to get the cables, and if we look at these as being a typo cable, I couldn't get the cables uh, sufficiently over to the side to connect with this strap. I was able to grab one, but many of them were hanging behind and were still rattling when I was finished, and that's not good enough. So I had to come up with a uh, plan B. So plan B in this case involves a soft Velcro strap. I peel off of here. There is a fuzzy side and there's a smooth side. Um, I'm going to bend the end up so that it'll be easier to do inside the guitar and then I'm going to, I'm practicing using one hand to loop this strap and get it through and nice and firm. Once I get that, I'll take that and run it up to the side strap and connect the Velcro strap to the uh, side strap, and that will hold the uh, cables inside the guitar more firmly than they are now. Right now, they're still rattling around too much, and I, I hope that this will uh, eliminate the rattling around of the, of the cables. Uh, I'm gonna give that a try, and then we'll take another look at the, what the guitar sounds like. Inside the Cremona classical guitar, the Velcro strap is doing its job, holding the cable from slapping around inside the guitar body. Okay, let's how it, see how it sounds with this non-shaking guitar. 
um, which is obviously a big improvement. Now, take a look at the system settings I'm showing you here. Uh, I've reduced the overall system gain to 67 from 87, and that has made it play better across the board. I, I, I run 87 on the Ibanez, and 67 is what I'm going to run on this from now on. It's not quite as loud, but much more, uh, well, we're going to see how much more it is. So if we, if we take a look at that very famous effect, the ECHO effect that uh, was giving us all the trouble, I'm also take a look at the echo settings and you can see that I brought the volume down as well. I'm playing full volume on uh, reverb and chorus, um, ECHO, I am dropped it down to about six, six, uh, 60%. Um, I'm also dropping down Octaver and Vintage. And I'm gonna play those three for you right now because those are the ones with all the problems. as loud as on the Ibanez, but sounds good. We have echo and it's working. Okay, let's move on. Octaver. Pretty heavy duty. You might remember that Octaver had a buzzing. Not anymore. Octaver was buzzing because of the loose cables, for sure. And it doesn't have that problem. Also, you're getting more of the Octaver and the higher strings on the one, two, and three string. Uh, it was almost invisible when it was turned up too high for some reason. Now, maybe the harmonics are better, and so you actually get more of the octaver, and it's working great. Vintage. Which I told you is one of my favorite to play on the Ibanez. I can play it on here now because... Just adjusting the system level was enough for uh, getting vintage working again. So there you have it. All the effects I like to play, I can play them on this guitar now. All a matter of cleaning up the inside of the guitar, getting the, uh, the cables right, and messing with the system gain and bringing that down, bringing down volumes a little bit, and everything plays nicely now. So success after all. So hey, Keep messing with music and see you again soon.